Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Wisdom 365. Wisdom for every day of our lives. My friend, today we will speak about big dreams, big God. Let us pray. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world things counted as nothing at all and use them to bring to nothing what the world considers important as a result no one can ever boast in the presence of god that verse has been a force in my life on a personal level I believe that that verse was operating in my life since I was a little girl. And I want to thank God for choosing me, those things or those people that have been rejected or abandoned or despised or that have been criticized or humiliated. And God chooses those people to bring big messages or big purposes onto the world and I just want to thank you my father for having called me when I thought that I was nothing when I thought that I could not do anything worthwhile my father and you had other plans you had other dreams you had other visions my father that I could not see at the moment and you were speaking to my heart and I was saying no God, not me. You must have made a mistake. I can't do those things. Why don't you speak to somebody else? I've said those words to God several times. In my life, God was asking me to call to do big things. He was calling me to write a book and to open a YouTube channel and to speak and to speak in public and all of those things at one point in my life they were impossibilities but god in his unwavering mercy and compassion and love had so much patience with me and god has unwavering patience with you God takes those who are weak, foolish, unknown, and broken vessels, and through us he turns the world upside down. Never for a moment should we discount ourselves because of our weakness or because of what we lack. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you so much for creating us and seeing all the things that we could be. My Father, you do your best work through humble, surrendered saints. Men and women that say yes to the call. As we look up today, my Father, we consider the men and the women that you have used throughout history even your disciples, they were all a bunch of un imperfect men with problems and limitations, and yet you use them for your glory. We consider the cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on, and we determine to find the ancient path of faith to mark out our steps we determine to read your word where we find validation and affirmation we determine to read stories in the bible that are true 
like for instance the story of Gideon and how you spoke to the man that was inside of him the victor the warrior that was inside of him when he saw himself as weak when he saw himself limited and full of insecurities and full of complexes you spoke directly to his heart to his spirit and you said rise up and Lord that is what you do and that is why Ephesians 3:20 is such an important verse in the Bible because you do exceedingly above and beyond anything that we can imagine think or pray Lord God we will dare to believe that you are mighty to change us and to make us into vessels where you will send us out into the world to do your best work. We will continue to smile, my Father, because we know that we are someone. We are children. And we have been called by you, Almighty God. We have been spoken for. And today we rejoice that we are not alone anymore, that we are not abandoned and rejected anymore. Today we have a God, a Father, a benefactor that sees, that hears the cry of our hearts. Thank you so much, my Father. Thank you so much. My Lord God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My friend, the message today is big dreams, big God. Because God can do it without a shadow of a doubt now all glory to God who is able. Are you willing to entertain the possibility that God has big plans in store for you? I hope you are. Yet sometimes, especially if you've recently experienced a life-altering disappointment, you may find it difficult to envision a brighter future for yourself and your family. If so, it's time to reconsider your own capabilities and God's capabilities. God can do it. Your Heavenly Father created you with unique gifts and untapped talents. Your job is to tap into them. And when you do, you will begin to feel an increasing sense of confidence in yourself and in your future. So even if you're experiencing difficult days, don't abandon your dreams. Instead, trust that God is preparing you for bigger and greater things. Ephesians 3.20 is significant because God's name is on the line. This is encouraging because of God's name has power. God's name is truth. God's name holds a lot of authority. We need to ask God for those things that we dream of, that we want, that we desire, those things that in our mind, in our physical, the natural, the human senses, it is impossible for God through his mighty power at work within us, nothing is impossible to God. And God's power is at work within us through his love for us. And when we experience the love of God, we experience the fullness and the power of God. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't look at what's around you. For it is God that is in you that gives you what you need. God is saying to you today, I will do it. I am what you need. We should never be afraid to ask God what we want. 
because he's there to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. It is amazing how God is there. As we put our trust in him, God will blow our mind. He is still waiting for us to ask him big prayers to blow our mind. And God always is asking us to tell him what we want because God is a loving father who wants to exceed our expectations. Don't be afraid to ask God for what you want. Now all the glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. God is amazing. And God is constantly at work. God never sleeps or slumber. God never rests. But he asks us to rest, to be still and know that he is God. But when we are resting, it is not resting without doing anything. When he says be still, that is still a, a stance of movement because we have to apply faith to it. We have to activate our faith in order to pray and in order to expect that God will do the impossible in our lives. So I encourage you, my friend, to pray big prayers because God is a big God. Thank you so much, my Father, for this message. Thank you so much for your word. It is so much fun, my Father. It is so amazing to read your word and to pray and to ask, my Father, and to see the miracle unravel before our eyes, my Father. I have experienced that with you many times in my lifetime, oh God. And it is just amazing how you do wonderful things for your children that dare to ask. Big dreams, big God. Thank you, Lord. My friend, I pray to the Lord that you are blessed wherever you may be, whatever corner of the world you may find yourself in. I pray to God that you are provided for, that his love for you is always, always clear to your heart, to your spirit, in your spirit every single day, that you see God everywhere you turn. And I pray that you find peace today. I pray peace over your family as well. Thank you so much for listening to these messages and coming on here at Blossoming by Grace and Grit. Thank you for all of my subscribers. I pray blessings over each and every one of you. And my friend, I remind you to play in the sunshine and dance in the rain. But most of all, I remind you to keep on smiling. And until we meet again, have a wonderful, blessed day. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God, and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy. I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. 
And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy and yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.